Hey, Alex, what's that on the floor over there? What, where? Over there. Um, yeah, sorry about the interruption, everyone. Let me get that. I know what this is. It's um, no BSM, no bad service management. It's a sign from the protest yesterday at the keynote. One of the protesters probably left it lying around. Yeah, one of them told me a funny story. What, what, what did they tell you? Well, it sounded like their teams were really siloed and support response times were really slow. So, one time this customer found the address of a developer's home office and they locked them inside until they got their problem fixed. <laughs> wow. Just, wow, I can't believe they did that. <laughs> um, yeah, I hope you invited them to this talk. Oh, yeah, they're over there. Oh. Hi there. Yeah, so um, my name is Alex, and I'm here with Agnes, who's our head of engineering for uh, service management. And we're both part of a product team that's focused on service management as part of, uh, on, that focused on customer service as part of Jira service management. And today, I'd like to tell you about this new model for support that we're offering, build it, ship it, support it. And later on, Agnes will come back up on stage and dive deeper into the product roadmap with you. Um, during Q&A, we'll also be joined by Vincent Wong, who's our product lead for this uh, mission. And to kick things off, I'd love to get a better understanding of who's in the audience today. Um, so let's do a quick poll. So uh, by show of hands, how many of you knew that you can use Jira service management for customer service before joining us in Vegas this week? Okay, okay, looks like quite a few. And um, how many of you are using it for external service today? Okay, looks like uh, about a half. And yeah, so that's awesome. And uh, whether you've raised your hand or not, so just so you know you're in the right spot, because we're gonna shine a light on this use case and also share what's coming next. And those of you who just raised their hands, you're part of a global growing movement of over 10,000 teams. So that's approximately one in four Jira service management customers that are already using it for customer service and external support. And now let's take a step back and try to get into the mind of a customer support leader. So for their service organizations, the need to deliver a great customer experience is non-negotiable. And Gartner surveys hundreds of heads of support every year, and this time around, they've asked them which challenges they're expecting to face in 2023. And some of these responses might sound familiar to you. So, um, Keeping up with customer expectations and technology challenges was a big theme. Um, scanning support, so making sure their teams can keep up with demand. And also the challenge to reduce costs, which is a big theme for all of us this past year with the macroeconomic uh, conditions we find ourselves in. And lastly, uh, getting management buy-in for change, which was also a big theme uh, in an effort to make customer service uh, differentiator. So these heads of customer service, they're in, a, they're in a tough spot. But some of them are in an even tougher spot than others. And these organizations that are just like yours uh, need to deliver exceptional customer service in a digital first setting. So what this means is these digital first organizations, they need to innovate fast and they need to innovate often just to remain competitive. Customers will reap the benefits when things work as expected, but when they don't, um, products can behave in unexpected ways and cause a lot of frustration. So a few weeks ago, we sat down and spoke about this with Fiona Gallagher, who's the head of uh, global product support over at uh, Iris, and we learned that before they adopted Jira service management for customer service, escalations, the dev escalations, would often have to bubble up all the way to the CTO to get resolved. Now, these escalations are often um, the biggest offender for customer satisfaction scores. And what Iris wanted to do here is to fast track these issues that require dev support, triage them, and get that first response out to the customer that puts them on a path towards resolution to avoid the negative um, downstream effects later on. So they wanted to do it right away, and. Um, they needed a new tool for that. So for, for, for these reasons, the traditional model where development operations and support teams work in silo departments using separate tools and processes is, is no longer enough. 
And it's putting the entire organization under a lot of pressure. And as we all know, the problems that customers have relating to technology are generally more complex and they require collaboration across teams to resolve and uh, drive up the time that it takes to get down to the root cause of the issue. So how do you transition from this world where you're in your fire firefighting mode to delivering a more delightful customer experience? We believe it hinges more and more on development operations and support sharing a common language. And what this means is, what if you could um, break down the barriers between the teams who build, ship, and support your product? What if your developers could easily leverage uh, these customer insights to solve more meaningful problems? And what if your operations team could understand the positive or negative impact of each release on customers? And what if your support team could become a core part of your company's strategy? These things are impossible to achieve alone, but they are possible together, helping the entire company work together to deliver exceptional customer service. And this is why Atlassian is in the unique position where we can complete this loop, break down the silos between those teams, and help make support a core part of your company's strategy. And the Atlassian platform is the only one in the market that provides you with the solutions to build it, ship it, support it, all on a shared platform. And the potential impact here is, is massive because when customers have um, these value-enhancing service experiences, it increases their um, probability to be retained, um, spend more money, and also share positive word of mouth. So from airlines to fintechs, uh, we have companies like Lufthansa and Riverty that using Atlassian products every day to support their customers and partners, not just their internal uh, teams. And instead of just telling you, uh, let me show you how one of those customers is using Jira Service Management today. Uh, so going back to the example I shared earlier with Iris and Fiona. So Iris is a technology company and they're building software for the financial services industry. And just to get a sense of the scale, they're handling every day. Iris products are used by more than 500,000 customers across 10,000 businesses all around the world. And like many of you, their development teams were already using Jira software when they adopted Jira service management. And since adopting the solution, Fiona's teams at Iris were able to deflect 20% of their customer service requests using the knowledge base that comes out of the box with Jira service management. And not only that, they've also been able to solve almost half of their support cases in under 24 hours, all thanks to being able to work together across their teams. So Fiona and Iris have done a really tremendous job here. And now let's, let's walk through the product to see how, um, how their setup looks like. And let's also meet Jane, uh, who's a, our imaginary Iris customer, who is also a financial planner and a user of the uh, X-Plan product suite, which is an Iris product uh, for um, producing financial uh, reports. And she's looking for help with customizing one of these reports. So her first step would be landing on Iris Connect, which is directly from the Iris product. And with, this is a site where she can easily self-serve using the knowledge base and the help articles uh, Fiona's teams have built, uh, or uh, raise a support request. And behind the scenes, this might probably look familiar to most of you. So this is actually powered by Jira Service Management's Help Center with customizations for the logo, um, header image, and the uh, welcome text. And from here, Jane can um, search for an issue or raise this request. So let's say she decides to create a request. And as she types in this summary, a few articles pop up with uh, answers for the more uh, common types of issues related to the summary she's typing in. In this case, it's a font right over there. And these suggested articles are what helps deflect 20% of Iris's support cases and frees up agent time to focus on the more complex issues that require um, more help. 
So let's say in this case, Jane has a slightly different problem, so there, these articles won't help her. So she decides to submit the request and reach, uh, reach a human on the other side. So let's magically flip over to Ed, which is uh, an IRS support agent that picks up Jane's issue from their queue. And Jane's request is routed to the product suite queue related to the um, specific form that she used, where an ad in his queue is able to pick up the issue and triage the request, deciding whether uh, he can solve this or on his own or whether he needs to escalate it to a different team. And Aris's goal here is to resolve as many requests as possible in their first line of response after they go through this triage process by their frontline agent team. But sometimes, as we all know, an escalation is required. So in that case, um, Aris's admins have set up uh, this workflow, and this is a real, sc real screenshot from their environment. So they're using this, uh, the, you, they use the workflow builder and automations to create statuses and process for moving these requests from one team to another without alerting their customers. So when a customer raises a request, from their point of view, it all happens in the, the same single conversation with Iris, and where all agents have the same context around their issue. And depending on the specific issue, requests would then flow to the frontline support team or get escalated to subject matter experts um, on other business teams, like uh, legal, for example, or um, uh, get escalated to a technical team, including the developers who worked on the, the product that Jane is using. So going back to Jane's request, it could decide to escalate it simply by changing the status in the issue. And that's it, that's all he needs to do. And this makes it a seamless transition between uh, Iris's frontline support teams back to the development team that are already using Jira software. So on one platform, these teams are able to easily work together to do what would have been impossible to achieve within a silo team, helping resolve these customer tickets quicker. And in this process, as you've probably guessed, IRS are generating a lot of data, and they've set up these dashboards and reports to make sense of it all. So they've been pretty, pretty smart about uh, how they've set up their dashboard so that it allows them to understand which product areas cause the lar largest number of escalations. So they, they can know where they would need to shift resources to, um, either by creating new help articles for, that, for those specific issues or by um, directing more development and product resources to improve the product experience in those areas. And this doesn't stop with development and support it extends to incident management as well. So by having incident management and support data in the same instance, all their teams are able to see the number and severity of incidents and how it impacts their support load. Yeah, so with this, I'd love to bring Agnes back up on stage to share what you can expect from us later this year. Thanks, Alex, for walking us through Iris's story. That was a great example of just how powerful Jira service management can be for customer support. And there are many capabilities today, uh, which you probably saw from Iris' story. You can customize workflows with automation rules, concepts you're probably familiar with if you've been a Jira admin. You can also have multiple queues with different SLAs to help separate your issues and to deflect, sorry, and to deflect the common issues, you can easily set up knowledge-based articles that will be used, read by your customers or even canned responses for your agents. Flexible reporting is also available with the ability to derive really powerful insights. As you saw from Iris's dashboards, you can even connect insights across your development operations and support teams. With advanced forms and conditional logic, you can collect the right information from your customers upfront, reducing the need to go back and forth. And various omni-channels are also supported, including email, chat, the help center, and as well as an embeddable version of it so you can have the request form embedded into your websites. So if you want to quickly try out these capabilities today, you can get started by creating a project with the customer service template. 
Out of the box, it will set up some default forms and workflows to help you get started. So we've walked through some of the capabilities available today. I'm now super excited to share what we have planned coming up next to help you deliver exceptional customer support. We're looking to focus on three main areas, better customer management, better support channels, and better agent experiences. With customer management, we understand how important it is to have that context and information about your customer. Soon you'll have new dedicated fields for your customers and organization information. We'll provide some default ones like address, but you'll also have the ability to add your own custom attributes. By having this information all available in the same system, you'll be able to make powerful queries throughout the product. For example, if you're a company that wants to provide global support, you may want to set up regional queues. And so here in this example, we've set up APAC US EU based on the new custom location, customer's location field. You could potentially even set different SLAs for the different tiers. You may choose to set shorter SLAs for your higher tier customers to ensure you have quicker response times. So these are just two examples of what is possible with this information. We are also going to bring this information closer to your agent's fingertips by having it directly available within the issue view. In addition to the organization fields, you'll also be able to associate individual customers with an organization very easily and see any associated requests all in one page. We also look forward to providing even more contextual information like entitlements and internal notes. Now, not only are we improving the customer context, we are also improving how you bring your JSM customers with single sign-on for external accounts. By connecting with your identity provider, it will mean a seamless experience for your customers as they flow from your product and getting support in the help center without the need to log into Jira Service Management. So moving on to support channels, we are also planning to make any improvements to the help center. We've heard your feedback about the ability to bring your own domains. So this will mean you'll be able to configure the help center soon with your custom domain. And also coming to the help center will be more flexibility in theming, branding, and layout capabilities. With drag and drop component controls, you'll be able to build custom experiences into the help center to help reflect your brand and elevate your support service. You'll also be able to set up multiple health centers to cater for your different audiences. Now moving on to the third pillar is improvements to the agent experiences. And one of the unique benefits of using JSM is how it can connect with the various function teams like product and development under the same platform. So we'll be looking to provide better workflows and experiences to improve these connections. Like here, you'll be able to easily escalate issues to your software teams in Jira software, maybe share ideas to your product teams in Jira products uh, discovery, or even incidents to your operation teams in JSM. And something I'm personally excited about, and maybe you've already seen in the main stage keynote yesterday, are the Elastin Intelligent features. With summary by Atlassian Intelligence, this will help your agents get up to speed quickly where the ticket was left off, from the ticket where the ticket was left off, and is especially useful for those really long support cases. And if you're using knowledge-based articles, it will also suggest that any relevant ones and also list ones you've already used, mentioned. Atlassian Intelligence will also be available in the comments editor. It will enable your agents to easily change the tone of your language based on the customer sentiment. Now, providing exceptional service is so much easier. With a click of a button, your agents will now be able to enhance or expand their responses. 
So there's never been a better time to use JSM for your customer support needs. Combining the flexibility and power of Jira with all the enhancements we have coming up next, we're here to build the perfect solution for your digital first customer support teams. We hope you are as excited as Atlassian will be the only solution on the market that will provide a unique and powerful solution to help connect all your teams to build it, ship it, and support it all on one shared platform. Thank you for joining us today. Um, up on the screen, we have a link to the product guide, which we uh, recommend you check out. Um, and with that, I'd like to invite Alex and Vincent back to the stage for any questions. Any questions? It all made sense. <laughs> <laughs> Um, on the customer context uh, feature, which is really cool and something we've been wanting for a very, very long time, for those of us who have done things like, say, used assets to um, generate that or use Salesforce for uh, customer information, um, will there be ways to automatically import that information into the new customer context feature uh, so that we're not duplicating this stuff yet again? It's a great Sorry. question. It's my post-lunch exercise. <laughs> um, so yes, um, so, um, the customer context capability actually underneath is built on very similar, the same platform we use um, for assets. Um, so I think we, it's a very early stage today. Um, so at, at first launch, I think we allow you to store all this information. Um, but moving forward, we're definitely looking to bring in um, not only import capabilities into the, into the information, but put, um, integrations into the leading sort of CRM um, as well. So you, can, you don't want to have multiple source of truth. Um, and for those who are using assets, um, I think we're also exploring ways on like, hey, how do we actually allow you to bring those information in easily so you don't have like two different things side by side. So, so yes, that, that's definitely something we are currently working on um, on the roadmap and it's coming um, as part of this as well. I guess I'll do the running myself. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys have any enhancements on the roadmap for call centers? Uh, about uh, one of our business units, 60% of our tickets come in through the phone. The other one, 80% of our tickets come in through the phone. Yeah, we don't have. Yeah, so I think today, um, as a part of the product, we don't have a native call center capabilities. Uh, but as our increased focus into the customer support, we're actually um, forming new partnerships um, with um, leading call center vendors as well, and also improving some of the integrations. Um, so that today on the marketplace, we already connect to some of the leading ones, like 8x8, uh, for example. Um, but you will start to see, I think, an increase on not just call centers, but I think different channels on how we support um, like the end users, like chat, et cetera. So one of our challenges with our call center is trying to do everything on one screen. Uh, so we're actually uh, in, our, in the process of migrating from our existing tool to Jira service management. And um, just trying to get a log a call form and all of that built where they can do everything on one screen. Um, like the add-ins for customer data uh, don't work great um, on that first screen. You got to save the ticket before like your customer data comes in. Um, so trying to do everything on one screen is a real challenge for us. So just some things like that. It doesn't have to be a full, you know, call center, contact center integration. Just you know, trying to just streamline so everything can be done on one page, you know, real quick when the phones are backed up. You know, just fire things through as quickly as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I'll. Thanks. Um, for associating customers with organizations, is there, besides for setting up an automation, is there anything that you have planned to make that easier? Yes. Um, so coming soon as well, we have the ability to store the domain name of the organization. Um, and then automatically match the user with the domain name so they get added into the organization. 
um, as part of that. Uh, and if a customer has more than one domain name, do you have the ability to associate yes. multiple to one organization? Yeah, that's uh, yeah. So we're we're working on as part of that capability to support multiple domains per organization and okay. do the mapping Thank you. as well. Uh, one other thing, there was a brief glimpse of a mention of canned responses, which is one of the biggest features that my team has missed since migrating to cloud. Um, are you bringing back canned responses, or is that going to be supplanted by intelligence, or where are we? No, we, um, we are bringing it back. I believe it's in beta right now. I think it'll be uh, rolled out to production by the end of the quarter, so that's definitely coming back, and it'll be even better. If you come by the booth, I actually got a demo of it um, working on my, on my laptop, along with the customer, the customer context things as well, so I'm more than happy to show you. Um, and also moving forward, we definitely look to not only bring back care and response, but also leverage um, Elastin Intelligence across the entire product to make it even better as well. Love every part of that. To follow up my friend in the purple shirt over there, for the, uh, for the customers in the past, you'd have to go into the customer section are you saying now in the current workflow it'll be on the same page as the, uh, the issue itself? Uh, we have another problem, which is we get a lot of tickets coming in from Gmail. So, you know, I don't have a unified domain to do anything with. Um, so what ideas do I have to make that faster for my agents to not have to go back into the customer pane and, and manually associate? Love to do it right in the ticket. Yeah, so I think... Um yeah, so you're saying that you want to easily on the issue yourself, just like, hey, right. this customer belongs to this They're in the issue. They're yeah. like, all right, I know where this person's from. Let me do it right there. In the past, we'd have to have this like laborious workflow where we'd queue up. Like, oh, we got to add these customers in later, and then yeah. we always we miss folks, and then we're missing all that data. Yeah, so I think with, the, with us bringing in, I think, that whole information panel into the issue view, I think that can help improve the workflow. There's a little bit of nuance to it as well, because today organizations use as a sharing mechanism as well. So it's actually a detached field. Um, but as part of us bringing that in, I think we're exploring like how do we make that workflow easier as well. So I um, believe it should help a lot in your use case. Um, but I can, I can double check on that um, and get back to you on the exact details. Thank you. I had a question around the organizations. Uh, the way that we operate, we'll work with a company, but then we'll work differently with different sites at the company. Is there any plan for a hierarchy that we could have different SLAs attached to different sites, but then still tie them into the same kind of main organization? Yeah, that's a great question. So today, um, organizations is, is quite a flat, flat structure. Um, so as, as of today, we don't have plans to introduce hierarchy of organizations, um, but we've seen customers create multiple organizations, so like your organization A, B, and C, and then you have parent organization as a, as a fourth organization to, to map something like that, and then use JQL with the SOAs to, to sort of map it that way. Um, it's not perfect, um, but it is one step there. Um, but that's a, that's a great um, use case as well, and we we'll definitely bring it back to explore further. Uh, for our use case, we run intake forms, uh, and we wanted to know if we had, or if you guys had any plans on saving a draft, for example, on a logged in user to come back later to, uh, let's say, fill out the form. Uh, sometimes there's a couple days between ideation and they want to come back to a draft. Sorry, the draft of a form? Did you so I'm using uh, the customer portal to yep. create uh, intake forms and my customers want to have like a draft function or a, maybe a permalink to come back to that cached information. Uh, and if there's any plans for that, that would be cool. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. I think, yeah, I don't, have, I don't think we have anything concrete at the moment, um, but that's definitely, uh, um, I faced that myself. I lost half my things when I viewed in my form um, by a simple refresh. So I think that um, that's definitely something we can tip back to the team. Yeah, definitely um, give that feedback. As we talked about earlier, we, we also also improving the entire, I think, portal experience as well. Um, so I think that's something we can, we can explore as part of that. Yeah, 
Yeah, so um, a lot of these will, will start to populate in a cloud public roadmap as well that you can go check out. Um, so you start to see a lot of these um, capabilities we talked about with, um, with the estimated timing starting to pop up um, on there. But I'll say the first version of customer context and can response are the two things that are coming up in the next few months. Next quarter, yeah. yeah and the then next incoming quarter. A lot of the stuff we shared today will be coming out probably later this year. But yes, please check the cloud roadmap for the updated details. I have no original questions, just follow-ups. Um, to that gentleman's question, uh, one of the use cases we have a lot, so we do our HR onboarding through JSM, which is great. Got all, all sorts of custom fields, what service line are you part of, et cetera. Sometimes they put the wrong thing and they submit the ticket. The user's expectation is they want to be able to go back and correct that, but, but they can't because it's already committed to, to a ticket. So a use case where they can go to that and, and change that, that submission from the portal would be awesome. Any, any thought of that? Yeah, I think that makes sense. I think, I don't know, can you do that with forms today? No, you can't. So yes, definitely a valid use case. Um, I don't think we have any concrete plans today, but definitely makes a lot of sense and something we can explore. Well, thanks for listening. Thank you. Well, we'll also be around at the booth if, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to give, uh, to give a quick annotation on the question. Uh, there's a plugin for that we're also using that you can go back into and edit the the ticket to edit the fields. Just a note. It's called feature bundle. <laughs> yes, uh, so hi. Uh, yeah, I am from AppsVio and we have this add on feature bundle. So you can edit requests and we have also customary details. So we have this in our apps. So please visit our booth. But the uh, question is <laughs> totally different. You presented this uh, layout possibilities, uh, changing layout. And I would like to know what is the impact on uh, apps. Because uh, in our apps, or the vendor apps, we can use uh, some uh, context panels now. And uh, what uh, if, you, um, if you release this layout changes uh, and what about our panels? How to define where app panels will be presented in this layout? And uh, um, another thing is what about API uh, in case of situation that customer use this, this layout? Yeah, so partners and um, vendors definitely top of mind for us. Um, I think um, today our portal, we give areas um, for you guys to, to build on top, but is that like, yeah. It's, it's not the best as well. There's quite limited areas. Um, so as part of working with this, uh, I think we're about to, we're actually starting our engagement to the various vendors today that are already building um, on top of our portal to actually, I think, work with them closer on like, how, how will we um, move into, into this new world? Um, I think that the other part I can add to that is, I think, as how we're doing the um, customization um, is not, like a full and you just do whatever you want. We actually, it's almost like think of like blocks. You have different blocks and different elements um, being placed on top of the portal. So uh, rather than an area, potentially how it works is like, hey, the marketplace builds on top of a block and then your block can be placed anywhere on, on sort of the um, help center. Uh, but yeah, I think the team will definitely reach out um, as part of them working through um, this initiative. Is there any more to add, Agnes? No, no, we're definitely talking about that. Yeah, yeah and one more thing uh, worth noting is that customer context is an opt-in feature. So um, all the changes you've seen, customers will be able to kind of, uh, will need to kind of switch the toggle on the features uh, um, screen uh, based on a project base basis. Uh, is there any plans to have the ability to have uh, Atlassian accounts and portal-only accounts be m merged in manual use cases? We want to sometimes, uh, sometimes our customers have a usf.edu domain email and we have like a Gmail because they're using their personal email and we want to kind of merge these two 
users together, is there any sort of plan for that? Do you want to merge them into an Elastin account or do you want to merge them into a Porto Uni account? I or you want them way. to be able to use both? Sorry? Do you want them to be able to still use both? Or? Uh, I think ideally both, but if we have to choose probably the domain specific account, yeah. uh, so it's just more for our governance processes. Uh, but yeah. yeah, is there any sort of plan to maybe merge those manually? I think today there is a way if you merge into a Alassin account. I think as part of the move to Alassin account, it will understand like, oh, that this account exists and then just adds towards that. Um, but other than that, I don't, I don't think we have plans today um, on, on merging accounts outside of that. Thank you.